So here at the library, our alternative library services include all of the maker space. So that includes 3D printing, it includes an audio booth, it includes sewing, robotics, digital cameras, painting, all sorts of things like that. We have kits that our patrons can take home. I think it allows them to have a technology that maybe they couldn't afford at home or that they couldn't spend that entire time here at the library. They can take it home, really get into it, and create their own objects. The other part of those alternative um, services that we offer are games. So a lot of people, especially since we're a community that's a resort community, we have a lot of people from out of town who don't necessarily want to watch TV or want something quiet to do in their hotel room or their home that they're renting out so they can bring games home. and So that's, that's fun too. Um, developing maker spaces in libraries actually and it's now probably 15 years that libraries have been looking at this, but the important part has been we're such a technological society anymore um, that it's a space where you can actually get your hands dirty again and work with your hands and collaborate with people you might not have. So I could have an eight-year-old on a sewing machine and then I can have a 40-year-old working on a project on their curtains or so on a sewing machine. So you have this collaboration that naturally happens in these spaces that you can't really force and that's the beauty of the makerspace. It was one of those technologies that eight years ago, or at least five years ago when I started doing this, was that um, it was a technology that was still not attainable to most people in their homes. Like A lot of people don't want to have this kind of technology at home, but we wanted to show it as a resource, um, something really kind of cool. And, um, it's taken me a little while to get as comfortable as I am with it, <laughs> to be honest, because there's always something that comes up with 3D printing. So, um, and we're unique in the fact that we allow our patrons to actually learn how to use these machines. And most places, they just they tell you to send them their file, which I think defeats the whole purpose. There are different reasons for that. Staff, staffing, you know, just someone might not even know how to use it. So changeover and things like that. So we're just really lucky that we can offer it this way. So it's, it's important to watch it the entire time. So at the library, no matter how long you print, you have to stay here with the printer. You can go to the restroom, obviously, and have water. But um, one of the things you sign off on is if you decide to do an eight-hour print, then you're here for eight hours. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> but you might not want to print that long. Um, in fact, I love to tell the story um, that we had a patron here who was using our 3D printer for about two and a half years or so. And what he was doing is he was an inventor. And he was doing many iterations of his invention here at the library, and it didn't cost him a thing. So for two years, what could have cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars was free to him to use as a resource. And he ended up following up with me later when he left the Valley, and he actually was able to get it machined and created. Um, and it was a hand, hand crank device where you would be out in the middle of nowhere and you could still charge your phones and your devices. Oh, that's so it was really cool. So yeah, there, there's that practical application. So it makes inventors and makers a lot more affordable for them to create. I'm always open to hearing um, what teenagers want or what our patrons would like to have. So every budget year I have to consider um, what that might look like. So I very much appreciate any feedback that anyone would give that would um, extend those services. I'm here for you. <laughs> like um, That is something that I want to provide uh, a safe place for all teenagers and um, patrons that come to the library that um, you feel safe, that you feel welcome, and that you feel supported. Hi, I'm TJ Schaefer. We're at uh, Thinking County Library, and I'm gonna play some guitar riffs for you. Uh. Tito, did you know that this space existed at the library? No, I didn't. Graphic novels allow for another level of learning um, that sometimes is not as accessible to some teenagers. So some people can't read 
pages and pages of just words. So it's really great that graphic novels can offer another way of learning. Um, also, there are a lot of characters in graphic novels that um, people will relate to that are not um, they're not necessarily represented in a traditional book. In fact, I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but I've started to collect a lot of nonfiction and civics-based uh, graphic novels. Yeah. So to help with, you know, subjects that are sometimes a little boring <laughs> can be re represented in a more fun way. You can have your superhero comics and then you can have memoirs. Um, and that's a real trend right now is that people are finding that it's really a great outlet to talk about their own lives. Um, in a way that's very different than just writing a traditional memoir. God, I would love to have like hundreds of teenagers here at every event. <laughs> so the Halloween event is very popular, so we're going to continue that. Book clubs, what have you. I mean, I really I wanted to start the Teen Advisory Board so I know what they want. So my biggest thing is join. Tell, make your voice heard because um, I'm listening. <laughs> So they advise on collection development, so the actual physical books and materials that are on the shelves, they can advise on that. They advise on events and programming, um, and then, you know, they just kind of create a fun environment, I think, in the library, <laughs> which I think is a really fun part of it. I think, honestly, and this might seem like a big, not such a big thing, but I think they have created an atmosphere in the library where people are actually understanding their importance more. Uh, they are the demographic, and you probably could look these, I don't know the exact numbers, but they are the demographic that uses, the, uses libraries the most in their communities. So I think just in our personal community that they've actually allowed people to actually see that, that you know, they're using it, they're using it responsibly, they're great, and they bring a great energy that uh, we missed during the pandemic. We're like, yes, the kids are back. <laughs> Teens have to pay for these services? No, not at all. All of these services are free. I, I encourage you in any community that you go to to look and see what and other libraries thinking. are doing.